Like, I feel like my mom's never gonna talk to me again. <laughs> Are you sure you wanna do the interview? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. It's just like, I know she's never gonna talk to me again. But that's okay, whatever. I don't know how to talk. <laughs> I'm so like nervous. <sighs> Cause my mom said she would disown me. But anyways, um. So your mom said she would mm -hmm. disown you? Mm -hmm. If what? Um, if I came out about my disorders because um, she doesn't like that I'm talking about it. But like, it's kind of a relief to me that I'm like, that I know what's wrong with me because like, it sucks when like, you know, you're not normal and then you have to like pretend because every single day I'm pretending and it's, it's uh, exhausting. So you are at a crossroads where you either have to decide to mask who you are for the rest of your life mm -hmm. or open up and potentially lose your family. I've already lost my family. <laughs> I've already lost them. Um, yeah. How have you lost your family? Uh, they, I call them and they don't answer. So, yeah. And I don't live in the same state as them. And they don't understand me. So they just don't want anything to do with me. And also there's a huge stigma that comes with um, antisocial personality disorder. Um, I think a lot of people, when they think of ASPD, they think of either CEOs or like criminals, like inmates, and they don't think about the people in the middle that are just trying to live with a personality disorder. You are a diagnosed autistic and a diagnosed mm -hmm. sociopath? Um, well, the technical term is antisocial personality disorder, um, uh, sociopathy and psychopathy are uh, part of those disorders. I've filmed a few interviews about antisocial personality disorder and I've mm -hmm. noticed in the comments people often confuse ASPD with being asocial. Mm -hmm. Can you discuss the difference between those two? Uh, so yeah, um, so antisocial personality disorder doesn't mean antisocial actually. Um, it's just uh, the the term that's used for sociopathy and psychopathy. Uh, a lot of people that are sociopaths are actually very social. Yeah, I don't want to be alone. I want to be around other people. So yeah, that's a misconception. Um, like uh, I have antisocial personality disorder, but like I don't want to be alone. I want to be around people. Would you say antisocial personality disorder means you have a lot of characteristics that go against socialization and being part of a society? Um, yes, yes, it, it, it does. And having healthy relationships. Yeah, yeah, because right now I only have one friend um, and all the other people that used to know me um, ran away, so. Why yeah. did they run away? Sorry, um, um, mm. How would you describe antisocial personality disorder to somebody who has never heard of it? I could only describe how it is for me. I can't describe how it is for other people. Um, for me, I don't feel, I want to sound crazy, but like, I don't feel human. Like sometimes, like I, I feel like almost, um, like, like a different type of person. Like, cause like, I see other people and how they're, you know, interacting and stuff, and I'm like, I want to be like that. Like, there's this want for me to be like that, but, and I can pretend to be like that, but, like, I don't know if I'll ever 100%, you know, like, be, you know, the way that I see other people. And, and even, like, with me, like, trying to, you know, like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have an afro and wear pink and be a sassy lady, and, like, even that is like, okay, what would you know, Kiki Palmer say? What would That's So Raven say? What would Moesha say? Like, it's all like based off of like, you know, like people that are like, oh yeah, like I like this type of black girl. It's like, I'm gonna try to be like that then. Cause I wanna be likable. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like what, what was the question again? I'm so sorry. Or like, I go on a rinse, rinse, rinse. Uh, How would you describe antisocial personality disorder to somebody who's never heard of it? To never heard of it? I would describe it as a Mm, different type of person that has trouble feeling emotions that has probably been hurt so um, be careful but don't just write them off because they're a human being 
Have you ever had a genuine care for anybody in your life? Um, I have tried to genuinely care for everyone in my life. Um, everyone that cares about me. But like, do I actually care? Um, I feel so bad because my friend is right there. <laughs> um, uh, Just so people know your friend is to the side yeah, for support. Yeah. Yeah, um... Do you care about him? I care about him because he cares about me. So, like, if he didn't care about me, then no, I would not care about him. If one day he no longer cared about you, would you be able to move on without any problem? If I was financially stable, yes. I'm sorry. I'm Are you sorry? I'm so bad. Um... <laughs> um... He's, he's laughing over there. Does he kind of know everything about you? <laughs> mm. um, um, I try to be sorry. I say I'm sorry and I want to mean it, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Why are you masking right now? Isn't this interview all about transparency? Yeah, but like, I, I don't want to say that I don't care about my friend because like, he literally takes care of me. <laughs> What is the thing that confuses you the most about other people? Everything. Everything. I don't understand people. I do not understand people. I do not understand uh, friendships, relationships, just going to the store and buying something. I don't get it. I have to pretend like I do. I'm in a constant state of confusion when it comes to human interactions. I don't know what love feels like. So like, I, I don't know, like I don't, I honestly don't know what happiness feels like. I don't know what love feels like. Um, when people are laughing, like I just laugh. So like, I, I don't know what those feelings feel like. Yeah, like I don't know, like some days I don't feel anything and I pretend. I pretend because um, I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable because like, even though I don't feel emotions like, like a normal person, like there's, you know, people around me that are neurotypical, normal people, and they feel emotions. So like, I, I mask for them. Like, I, you know, like, yeah, I don't want to be selfish and like, just, you know, have like a apathetic look on my face and a monotone voice and, <laughs> and have those people like be around me. So I pretend because that's, that's what I have to do because society isn't open to people that are neurodivergent. So like I have to pretend to be neurotypical to fit into society. I don't know who I am. I don't even know what my real voice sounds like. I don't even know, cause I have, um, like I used to have an accent when I was younger cause my family's from the Caribbean, right? So like, I don't even know what my real accent is, what my real voice is, um, who, who I actually am. Like I know what I'm, what I won't tolerate. I know what my boundaries are, but like, uh, yeah, like it, it breaks me because I, uh, I have to like, uh, you know, be a different person and for every situation, for every person I meet. Now that I'm diagnosed and like I know what is wrong with me, I've been like trying to like fix myself. But when I was younger, um, I was not like the best person because like uh, I was being abused at home, at church and in school, like physically abused. Um, so like when I got into high school and like those things were not, no longer happening to me, um, I became kind of like not so good a person um, because that abuse in childhood kind of like changed me a little bit. Um, so yeah, uh, back then I used to lie a lot and maybe you could say manipulate people, but like I'm not like that anymore. Yeah, and that's why I have like uh, ways of protecting myself now because I don't feel safe. And and I think that's probably why like I have problems feeling positive emotions because I've had trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma. So like that does something to like uh, your soul, your mind, your brain, your neural pathways. Like I yeah I don't I don't know if I'll ever get better, but I hope I will. Do you believe this trauma is possible to be worked through? Everything you've experienced. Do you think so? I, mean, I think I'm broken. I don't know if I can be ever be repaired. 
because like I've met, I've, I've met grown men and like I don't think I'm a scary person, but grown men have like ran away from me. Like Joseph has no, known this. Like I've scared grown men before. Can you and share I'm, about what it is that scares them? Joseph, can you tell him? Uh, I think I don't feel comfortable. Yeah, that. yeah. I think it's because you know how she acts is is unpredictable. Before we continue, I just want to provide a bit of context yeah. for our audience who was watching this. Yeah. Joe, who is your friend, is right to the side <laughs> there. You've been living with him. Yeah. He's also autistic, mm -hmm. but he's not comfortable being on camera. But he'll be a big part of this interview because he said it's okay for his voice and for us to ask him questions. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for being part of the interview, Joe. Yep, no problem. Yeah. Joseph is also autistic. Um, and uh, we are friends because um, uh, I'm not his type. <laughs> and that's that's good, though, because, like, I prefer, like, it's, like, like, I think the only way a friendship between a man and a woman could work is if one of them thinks the other one is ugly. Like, honestly speaking, right? So, like, I'm like, great. Um, because Joseph is an amazing person and like he's used to like mentally ill women because he has mentally ill women in his family So like he's kind of like my caretaker kind of because like he cooks for me. He drives me places So like he's he's honestly like my best friend and it sucks because like like I, I wish that like I uh, I had that like oh like best friends forever, but like yeah, like because I'm um, because I have like th this whatever I have like I don't even have that with Joseph and Joseph Joseph has done more for me than my own mother has Yeah So his role in my life, I would say bestie slash caregiver when you wake up What's like the first thought you typically have? I wake up angry every single day. I wake up angry and I like sometimes I scream <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways. Is, is there something that you're thinking about or is it just like all this repressed? I'm angry that I woke up. I'm angry that I woke up. Yeah. It's just like, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Like if I'm around like other people, then I won't, I'll like pretend like it's okay. But like, um, Joseph knows me. So like, I just wake up and I, I wake up angry every single day and I don't get sleep. I probably get two, three hours of sleep a night, and I honestly don't know how I'm still alive. Like, I, it's like crazy, like, I don't know how I'm still alive, honestly. Cause like, how the hell can someone live off of that little amount of sleep? I don't know. Joseph, do you sometimes hear her just wake up and scream? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, or um... I don't know why I'm laughing. You know, or just like, take a pillow, throw it across the room, or something harder than a pillow, and you know, have to patch the wall or whatever and you know it's so it is like it, it's difficult obviously do you still have a lot of anger uh yeah yeah that's like the only anger loneliness depression that's the only feelings that i have left unfortunately do you experience them constantly or do they come and go and then you just feel numb other times they come and go and then i feel numb other times um it's, yeah, it sucks. It's the, it's not good. Like, obviously, I, I don't want to feel numb. When's the last time you genuinely laughed? That's a good question. Huh. Hmm. I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. That's a very good question. When's the last time you genuinely felt anger? <laughs> Was that a genuine laugh? <laughs> this is horrible. Um, probably like an hour ago. I honestly don't know what's wrong with me. Cause I did have like a really like horrific childhood. So I don't know if it's just like trauma from childhood that has affected my brain. Like I have no idea. How were you diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder? Um, so I, uh, the psychiatrist gave me the hair psychopathy test. And um, uh, because of that test, uh, 
they said that um, I had uh, ASPD. But just because like of the of the emotional pain and the the mental pain that I've been in from things that I've gone through, like I've inflicted that emotional and mental pain on other people, and then who knows, they probably inflicted that. Do you tend to hurt people in your life? Not intentionally, no. Not intentionally. Um, not intentionally. I feel so bad. Do you? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, um, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know. Um, what did you think when you were diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder? Um, well, I don't know. Because, like, I'm obviously not a murderer, right? So, like, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm not, like... Jeffrey Dahmer eating people and all that gross stuff, ew. So like, I don't know. I didn't know if that was a correct diagnosis or not. There's a saying like, when someone shows you or when someone tells you who they are, believe them. Like, for the past five years, I have been so honest with people. I tell them like, everything that's wrong with me. And they're like, no, there's nothing wrong with you. You're normal. And I'm just like, damn. Like, everything is, uh, uh, like uh, that's invalidating it's invalidating and then when I do something like you know like weird or like messed up they're like how can you do this or what's wrong with you mm. and it's like I told you what was wrong with me you didn't believe me so maybe being honest creates a level of trust which is counterproductive <laughs> to what you're trying to do yes Yes, yes. People, they say, oh, she's so honest, or she can't have this, like, she says she hates herself. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, so I'm honest with you, and you don't believe me. And then, um, you know, like, I, I do something weird, like, with, with the autism, or like, you know, I, you know, like, I don't know, accidentally, you know, hurt someone's feelings. And then there's like, how could you? I trusted you. And it was like, well, I was honest with you and you trusted me and I told you not to trust me. <laughs> so yeah, it's just crazy, honestly. What is the earliest you recall having symptoms of ASPD? Mm. Uh, it was when I was in middle school and um, my teacher said, how are you? And I was not doing good at the time. And I said, I'm fine, how are you? And we had like a whole five minute conversation, me and this teacher, and I was lying. And she believed every bit of it. Um, so then I just started lying every single day to every single person about every single thing. And um, yeah, uh, that's not normal. <laughs> and uh, lying, manipulating, um, kind of like, uh, uh, so, so that's when I was start, like, I think I'm a little better now than I was when I was younger. Um, because that's when I was like, um, kind of like, you know, treating people like objects. Uh, because um, it was easy and I was bored. So, um, yeah. Could you go a little further into that? What do you mean? Um, um. Are you hesitant to share details that can make you reflect negatively on you? Mm. Yeah. We haven't talked a lot about autism. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest way autism impacts you? Mm. It's harder to hide. It's harder to hide. It's harder to mask my autism. Um, yeah. Because with my autism, I'm like... <sighs> but with ASPD, I could just be like... Ah! <laughs> you know, but with autism, it's like... What age were you when you were diagnosed with autism? Mm, I was 25. What was that like? Uh, it was a relief. I honestly feel like if I was diagnosed earlier, like I would have been in a way better like position in life than I am now. Diagnosed with autism, ASPD, or both? Autism. Because the reason why I developed ASPD is because of the trauma from the, the autism so um well not the trauma from the autism but like uh i don't think that i would have been you know subjected to like the amount of abuse that i was if i wasn't autistic 
So yeah, I don't think that would have like developed into a personality disorder. Can you discuss why you were diagnosed early? Why I, I, w I wasn't diagnosed early? With autism. Oh, um, my mom is from the Caribbean and in the Caribbean, um, they don't believe in things like autism or uh, OCD or anxiety or depression. Um, so yeah, like my my mom saw that I can talk and you know do daily tasks like brushing my teeth and like going to school. So she didn't think that I had autism. What is it like for you to sit here and socialize with me when I'm like three feet away? It is hard because I feel vulnerable. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. How did not being diagnosed with autism lead to trauma? You can share as mm -hmm. much or as little as you'd like to about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it made me a target. Uh, because I was nonverbal um, until like the age of five or six uh, and I didn't really understand people at all and um, what was the question again? I'm so sorry. How did not being given that autism diagnosis mm -hmm. lead to the trauma that led to ASPD? Mm -hmm. Not be. Oh, because if I was given like support and help and stuff, I don't think I would have been in positions where, you know, I would have experienced trauma. I honestly, like, thought that I was crazy. Like, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know why um, I couldn't understand people. And then I would try to explain to, like, to, like, you know, whatever friends I had back then that like, I think something's wrong with me and they were like, no, like, there's nothing wrong with you. Like, but like, I could understand like complex math problems, <laughs> um, but I can't understand like, uh, like uh, social, like basic social situations. So it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. But, um, but yeah, uh, after I found out that I had autism, it was a relief because then I was like, okay, well, this is why I have trouble understanding people and communicating with people. Um, like, uh, there's a, a name to what's wrong with me. I'm not just like a crazy person. What are some of the symptoms of autism you commonly experience? Mm. Um, the symptoms, uh, difficulty um, uh, socializing, um, difficulty looking people in the eye. <laughs> um, I've gotten better with that though, with age. Are autism and antisocial personality disorder your only diagnoses? No. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, um, depression. Uh, Joseph, can you help me? Uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah, obsessive compulsive, anxiety, um, by dysmorphia. Uh-huh. I have a lot. I think that's everything for the mental stuff. No, it's actually not. Um, but I have maybe. a lot. But, um... Yeah, like, I pull my hair out when I'm angry and stuff. Like, I there's just a lot of stuff wrong with me. So, I've never had a boyfriend. And I'm 30. I've never had, uh, like, a real, you know, relationship. Like, I've had online relationships with people that I've never met. Right? That's not, my therapist said, that's not a real relationship. What did you think when your therapist said that? It hurt because I thought it could, I don't know, I thought it was a real relationship. But she said no. She said, um, you have to meet in real life. So I never had a real boyfriend. I was talking with Joseph about this. And um, like, would a guy really want to be with a woman that doesn't know if she's capable of love? Like... <sighs> Would that be fair to him? Like, let's say I found a, a man that loved me, like, and let's say I respected him and I, and I, and, and I took care of him and blah, blah, blah. Like, like, but I wasn't a, capable of loving him. Like, is that fair? You know? So I don't know. I want, I want a man so that I can be normal, but like, I don't know if that would be fair to like any man that I'm with, but like, I still want to be 
with someone because I don't like being alone. Because a lot of the times, the reason why I'm angry is because I do everything by myself. And the few times that I do think do things, I do them with Joseph. But um, Joseph is not my man, so it just makes me depressed. You've told me off camera about your struggle to find a therapist. Mm -hmm. Do you feel comfortable discussing that? Sure. Um, so uh, there is a stigma when it comes to uh, antisocial personality disorder. And also, a lot of therapists don't know how to treat patients with autism. So uh, because I have antisocial personality disorder, autism, uh, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, um, and OCD, and oh, attention deficit disorder, that's another one that I have. Um, like because I have all of these mental health disorders, they don't know where to start and they just like don't want to treat me. And also um, uh, because of, I have several different psyche valves and one of my therapists, I don't believe, I think um, I think she, she triggered, like uh, I triggered her or whatever. And in the psyche valve, she wrote some very disturb disturbing things about me. So if another therapist sees that, which is in my chart, cause it's like an app um, and they read that psyche valve, then they don't want to help me because of what she wrote on a psyche valve when she was crying. So it's like, I, I, <sighs> do you know what she wrote? Um, yeah, well actually no. Um, I can kind of remember, but I have to like try to get that that specific psyche valve. I have all my other psyche valves, but for some reason, I'm having a hard time getting that. But basically what she wrote was that um, I uh, am emotionless and that um, uh, helping me w is very difficult and like all this other stuff. Like, and she, she wrote that like she was in distress and that I was unresponsive. But like, why do I have to be responsive to you when you are supposed to be the one that is like, you know, helping me? Like, and also, aren't, don't they go to school for like, like not letting, like in, in psychiatry, psychology classes, like don't they teach them not to internalize like their patients like uh, stuff or no? I don't know. So basically, uh, I was talking about how um, I was at nine years old and um, I guess she has a daughter and she was, um, it was affecting her, what I was saying, and um, she started crying and uh, it was during the pandemic and I had a mask on my face and she had a mask on her face and like I was sitting at one point, at one spot in the room and she was at the other, you know, point in the room and like I didn't know what to do um so I just sat there and I waited for her to stop crying and when she stopped crying um uh she became very angry and I didn't really know why um and the next session that I had with her um she gave me that test and diagnosed me you shared that you've had a lot of trauma in your childhood and adult uh -huh. life do you have memories pre-trauma not really. Yeah, not really. I don't know. I don't know what, what it was like to be a happy kid. I don't really know. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's why I'm so angry. <laughs> like the one feeling that I have that Joseph can attest to is anger because I'm just like, I, I think it's because like, I don't know what it feels like to, to just be happy and laugh and stuff. I just couldn't like take it anymore. So I consciously started to, to suppress my emotions. And um, after like doing that for a couple years, like I didn't have to consciously do it anymore. I just like, it just was natural. Like anytime I felt anything, like I would think to myself like, oh, why are you happy? <laughs> and I would just like be numb. So yeah. I think more people are more open to, to um, like helping women or accepting women with ASPD because they don't see them as a threat. They don't see them as someone that they should be wary of, you know, because oh, it's, it's a woman, whatever, you know. But um, but yeah, like, and maybe that's why men with this disorder are more prone to violence because they don't have anyone to hug them when they're, you know, angry and want to hurt, you know, some someone. They they because you know there's that fear, but that fear is valid. So like, I don't know. There are, uh, I think. Every uh, every year, there are two hundred thousand people diagnosed with a ASPD. So, like, 
there's this huge stigma of like oh they're like people with aspd are like horrible people but the thing is they're like we're like literally like in plain sight you know you wouldn't even know so like this the uh, uh, can you what is the question again i'm so sorry what do you want people to remember most after they finish this interview uh-huh um uh that people with cluster b traits are just like anyone else it's i think one in every 30 people have an aspd so yeah like if you're in a classroom one person in your classroom is a sociopath so yeah like it's not so scary like the media makes it seem we're just people that have trouble feeling emotions that's it what advice do you have for somebody who is in a toxic relationship could be romantic or friendship yeah. with a person who has yeah. aspd to leave to leave so um so they have to acknowledge that they have a problem and then they have to want to get help because if they don't acknowledge that they have a problem or want to get help then you should run i try to have empathy and i it's 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 very very exhausting that always having to think okay what should i do now because things that neurotypical people do um you know just easily normally like i have to do manually so um I would hope that they would have empathy for me because I, I, I practice like a, like empathy for others. Like when you said earlier, like do I care? Like no, but I mean human life is valuable. So like I'm not going to kill someone. I would want society to be more accepting of people that have a hard time feeling feelings because there will be people in the comments that said that are, are going to say like oh she doesn't have antisocial personality disorder she's laughing she doesn't have autism she's looking him in the eye and they don't know that it's like i've been alive for 30 years i'm 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 you know yes i am fake laughing yes i am looking at you in the eye out of respect because people don't like it when you don't look at them in the eye so it's like i would like it for society to be more accepting of neurodivergent people um instead of acting like we don't exist